Today we're working on exercise 21. In exercise 21 we're going to learn how to make uh, a spoon. In this case we're going to use surfaces and we'll also learn an import technique for bitmap images or JPEG images that you could drop into SOLIDWORKS and use them to trace around for reverse engineering purposes. Now the accuracy can be questionable as it really depends on how clear your picture is and no matter what you're not going to get very high tolerances through this so just remember this is ne not necessarily the way to go about uh, creating a very accurate part but for a spoon it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference in this case so let's go ahead and begin I'm going to start with the new part file I'm going to select my front plane and start a sketch. Now what we have here, uh, I actually have two photographs or two bitmap images that I took from an existing spoon and we want to drop them in. Now they could actually be real photographs using a digital camera or a scan and image or in this case they're actually just uh, screenshots of the spoon that were uh, that was previously built in SOLIDWORKS. So I'm, first of all I want to bring up a new, t a new button and I'm going to right click on any of these icons I'm going to go to Customize, and under Commands and Sketch, we should find the Picture, Sketch Picture tool. Just grab that and drag it out, and get it onto your toolbar. Now this is how we insert a Sketch Picture. While the Sketch is active, we click on Sketch Picture, and you can see I already opened up to Exercise 21. If you do not have these files, you could take photographs of your own spoon at home, take a front and a right side picture and you could use those otherwise um, I'll try and make sure that these get inside the folder. First of all I'm going to drop in the front view or the front picture. So I'm going to go ahead and hit open. Okay and it looks like it dropped it in and here we can see it's very large what you might want to do is uh, take some measurements of the spoon initially and find out how tall it is and how uh, basically just how tall it is because uh, as long as you scale it proportionally it should be fine and this is how we could set it up now that we have it in here I'm just going to hit the green check mark to apply it and I could have done this actually before I dropped the picture in but either way works fine I'm going to go over here and I'm going to draw a center line right at the origin and this spoon is approximately seven inches high. So I'm going to go ahead and dimension this line to seven inches. Okay, now I have some way to figure out the scale. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and click on the double click on the image and you get little drag handles. You could grab the corners and scale it down to size. And then you could locate it just by grabbing the center of it and locking it in. In this case, what we're looking to do is we want to find the transition right here. There's a little line that indicates that. You might not have that on another photograph you have of a spoon, but try and find where it transitions from when it goes in and out. The reason why is we're going to do this in two separate uh, sweep features. We're going to actually create the top and then the little base here. And so we want to center it on the origin, just like that. And actually, it still needs to be squeezed down a little bit more so that fits within the seven inches. As a matter of fact, I'm going to drag it right over here up alongside of it so we could make sure we get it approximately as close as we can. Okay, now I could go ahead and center it. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit more to the right. Over to the left here, you'll actually see you could type in explicit values. So if you do have some information like that, you could use it to rotate it or, or move it X and Y or even shrink it. There's a, a shrinkage factor there too. All right, now I'm just going to go ahead and exit this sketch. So to do that, I have to hit the green check mark and then hit exit sketch. And I don't want to fiddle with this sketch picture. You can draw over it if you like, but I like to keep it up and I like to hide it sometimes and yet see the sketch separately. 
So I'm actually going to name this by clicking on it twice very slowly. I'm going to rename this to Sketch Front. picture. All right, now I want to bring in the right side picture. So I'm going to go over here and uh, we'll select the right plane, click on sketch, and let's rotate it a little bit. And now we go to sketch picture. And now we select the right side image. Hit open. You'll see it accepts JPEGs, TIFFs, WMFs, PNG files, GIFs, and bitmaps. So it selects a, a variety of different images. So depending upon what you have, it's pretty forgiving in figuring out which one you need. OK, anyhow, let's go ahead and squeeze this down. And let's try and align that to that line that we have. We could actually go to the right side view. might be easier that way. And there's our gray line that indicates the height. Always grab the corners. Don't grab the center marks because that will actually scale it only in that axis. Therefore, you'll have a very strange looking object when you're done. So be careful of that. Okay, now here, if we zoom up, we can see the little line there as well. And for this center, actually we want that to be located right at the tip there. You'll see that there's a little bit of a bow on that spoon. Okay, and at the very top, we can see maybe we need to align this. So this is where we could use our angles right here and align it. So it looks like it's going to be less than, uh, it'll just be a couple minutes versus a whole degree. So I'm going to put in 0.5. And that seems to have worked over here on the left, which is this is the rotation angle. Okay, that's done. We could exit the sketch. And now that we have them both in there, now we could start working on it. So let's go back to the front plane, start a sketch, and we'll go normal too. First thing we're going to do is we're going to sketch the outside profile from the line here, from the origin, all the way up and around. So with that, we go ahead and we find the spline tool. And we glide up to the edge here and we get as close as we can to where we want to start and just start clicking. And sometimes you need a lot of points, sometimes you don't need a whole lot. The closer you get to tighter corners, you're going to need many more points to hold it in place without warping the rest of the spline. And then just, I'm just going to right click and end spline when I got there with what I have. Now, another little trick we're going to use here SaltWorks does give you the ability, gives you little handles on these. I haven't had a whole lot of success with them. You could try them if you want. You just click on the endpoint. Otherwise, I take a center line and I draw a center line tangent off of the edge. And now I could select that center line and make it horizontal. And if you need to fix your geometry, feel free just to grab the points and move them around a little bit until you got it the way you want it. Okay. And at the very bottom, make sure you add a relationship between the end points of the spline and the origin to make them horizontal to one another. And even here, I think I'll make a center line tangent to the end point. And I'll make that vertical. Again, the reason for that is so when we create the bottom part, it's going to be tangent to the bottom because we'll be able to just come right off of it. OK, now we could go ahead and just hit Rebuild. And I'll rename that sketch the uh, front. Edge. OK, 
because that's the front edge of the part on the, on the left side. This one I forgot to name, so I'm going to go ahead and name that, and we'll name that the right pitcher, or right side pitcher, that's fine. Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and we're going to create a uh, profile of the outer edge from the right side to follow this to make a 3D guide curve. So to do that, we now select the right plane, start our sketch, and we'll go normal too. And now the edge I'm talking about is this edge here, not the one that's right on the origin, but the one that's a little bit lower right here. You can barely, it's kind of hard to see, but we're going to follow that. And then it doesn't swoop all the way down under here. It's not the, the base of the spoon. It's this edge here that follows up. So let's go ahead and create that. Now you could create this with splines or analytical geometry, meaning lines and arcs if you like. Um, either one will work. I'll actually do lines and arcs just to try something different. And again, you want to make sure you align yourself to the origin. Click. And drag it out till it seems as though it's starting to bend. And then we can use this little trick. You could either click on the tangent arc tool up under the arcs, or if you are still in line, this is a little quicker, you could just go back, tag where you started that line, and it will automatically transition. Now, when I mean when I talk about tag, I mean just moving over it. You're not actually clicking. You're just moving over it, and it resets it to a tangent arc. And so then you just follow this down. Make sure you follow tangency. Uh, in this case, it's not quite there. We'll do another arc by tagging it. And here we go. We're starting to get what we want. And that looks pretty good, actually. Follow the tangency. And then hit Escape on your keyboard, and then you could re just move this to align it, get it right on the edge. And actually, you'll probably want to lock it into this point here, the last one. Okay, I think we're pretty well set there. One last thing, again, make sure that this endpoint of the line is horizontal with the origin. So hold control, select them both. And now you can hit rebuild. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and create our curve for that. And actually, I'll change the sketch name here to right edge. All right, if we want, we could actually hide these pictures. I'm going to right click on the picture and select hide. And the right picture, select hide. So we can see our two curves. Okay, now this is this is what we do. We now go and bring up our surfacing tool. So right click on any icon and find surface surfaces. And here they are over to the left. And what we're looking to do is a sweep. Oh um, actually I take that back. We're not ready yet. I forgot one critical element. We have to have a profile. And then the center is our path, and the guide curve is on the outside. So to do this, we just need to go ahead and select. Uh, excuse me, actually, we don't need the profile just yet. What we want to do is create a 3D guide curve from these two. Got a little ahead of myself there. OK, and that is found under Insert, Curve, and you want Projected. Now with projected, there's sketch onto sketch or sketch onto face. We want sketch onto sketch. And we did this in exercise uh, in the fundamentals class, um, exercise seven. But here we'll go ahead and select that, and select this. And we have our outer edge being constructed with a combination of the two. So we hit the green check mark to apply, and there is our outer edge. Now we have to make a center and then the profile. So let's bring back our pictures. We just right click on them, show and show. You could show one at a time if you like or either way, it really doesn't matter. Okay, now we have to make the 
a path. So it's actually going to be on the right plane, so we can select the right plane from the tree, start a sketch, and we'll go normal too. Okay, now this geometry we're going to make is going to start at the origin and follow the top edge, and then it comes down and rolls underneath, and then comes back up. So in this case, we might want to use a spline. We could probably get away with something else too, but we'll use spline here. And we'll start right at the origin. We click, click again, again, and follow that top edge. Now, oh, actually, you cannot use, this reminds me, you cannot use analytical geometry because analytical geometry cannot, yeah, the thing about using the spline here, it's necessary because, as you'll see here, it trans transitions, it goes from concave to convex, and arcs cannot transition like that and when used in conjunction with a sweep. So you need to use a spline. And I'm just going to tag it up there and then right click to add the spline. All right, and there is our path. So we'll hit rebuild. And again, I'm going to go ahead and hide some of this geometry or some of the pictures just by right clicking on them. Actually, they're not coming up there, so I'll probably have to click over here. Okay, and it's a little bit off, so I'm going to go and edit that sketch and just bring it up to that curve. So we could select both, and we could either go coincident or pierce. I'm going to go with pierce there. Maybe smooth that out a little bit. All right, I'm going to hit rebuild. And now we can make the profile. Now to make the profile, because we do everything off of the origin, that means we could select the top plane and just create a profile on it. And because we did all the work up front, we were able to um, have a nice um, place to draw this and everything with the horizontal relationships with the endpoints, uh, we'll have no problem in locking this in. And again, we use the spline tool. The reason being is what I described earlier where it can't, a spline could go from concave to convex and that's what's going to happen here. Otherwise, if you use another method, you might have some trouble. So we're just going to draw a line there and there. So three points and spline. And then we're going to set up a center line off the origin. And just make sure it's vertical. Let's delete that. I accidentally... Actually, we could probably go normal too. Take the center line and off the origin. We'll draw it straight up. Or in this case, that's what looks down. All right, now what we want to do is we want to make the two endpoints symmetrical to one another to that center line. So we could hold control, select both endpoints of the spline, and then select the center line from the middle of it, and you'll find symmetric. And apply. Once you have that done, go ahead and select the endpoints of the spline closest to the guide curve on the left, and then select the guide curve. Don't select the endpoint of it. And then what we're going to set up here is a Pierce relation. And now I just hit Rebuild. And we'll call that our profile. And this is our path. Sketch 5 was our path. Okay, so now we're ready to sweep. It's a good, a good idea probably to save it at this point just to make sure it's with all the work you've done. Call it E21. And now 
we could use the sweep surface. Now be careful, do not use the sweep boss base in the features. You have to bring up the surfacing tools. That's a right click, find surfaces, and they should appear on your left or maybe your right. But in this case, we're looking for swept surface. Surfaces are very good because in this case, you notice I don't have any closed contours. Uh, everything is just individual lines like the profiles, just a line, a thin feature. So that's why we need a swept surface. It's, it's a little less complex than having to generate it as a solid initially. So it's going to save, save, save ourselves some time. Oh, I spelled profile wrong. But uh, anyway, let's go ahead and uh, we'll select the path, which is in the center. And then go to Guide Curves and select the outer edge. And there it is. Now the reason we made these two symmetric to the center line on that profile is basically so it would do this. It actually follows through as it sweeps along and it follows the outer edge. And because they're both the, the, the geometry is symmetric, it shows up that way. So we'll hit the green check mark to apply. And bingo. We have our uh, spoon surface. Now at this point we might want to analyze it to make sure that there's no issues. Like at the tip sometimes there are issues because it all condenses to one little point there. And if we tr what we're going to do is we're going to thicken this or add thickness to it to make it a solid. Because right now it's just like a, it's a thin sheet. It has no thickness, a zero thickness. So we want to add a little more to it. When we do that, if there's any sort of bundling up on the surface or an anomaly, we might have an issue with it. So this is how we test for an anomaly. We could select the surface, and we go to View, Display, and we'll find Curvature. And here we could see if there's any things like up here. It looks like it's a little there's a little black definition that appears. That means that it could be a little tight in that corner. The rest of it looks pretty good. So what we can do in this case is we'll turn off, um, actually we'll go to the front plane, start a sketch, and go normal too. And my suggestion is that you just, sorry about that. Um, anyway, what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and chop off the top. So we're going to go ahead and select the, we already selected the front plane, we started our sketch. Just draw a little line, just like that, across, and then add a dimension to the tip. We should be able to lock in. Eh, I wasn't able to get it. Let's try it one more time. Let's zoom up there a little bit closer. There we go. To there. And we're going to trim off maybe ten thousandths of an inch. And you'll see later on it's not going to make too much difference. And that's why I said this isn't very accurate necessarily, but just ten thousandths isn't going to make a lot of difference So, um, for a spoon and then we'll smooth it out with a fillet at the top once we thicken it. All right, and now we could go over here and there's a, um, there's a trim, actually let's hit rebuild, and there's a trim surface tool. And right, right over here on the surfacing tools, trim surface. And what we do, um, the trim tool is gonna be the sketch. And then now we have to select the, what we wanna keep in this case, we want to keep this. And hit the green check mark. And it trimmed off the tip for us, which had the little black mark, which indicates that it was bundling up on, on itself. Actually, indicates flatness generally, but uh, I think it's just so tight there, we couldn't see a very good view. All right, now the next thing is we could turn off our, we go to View, Display, Turn Off Our Curvature Analysis. And now we'll go ahead and try and thicken this. Now to thicken it, you just select it. And we go to Insert, Features, or actually Boss. So Insert, Boss, Base, and Thicken. Now you could thicken it on one side, on the top of it, or on the bottom of it, or mid-plane, or meaning both sides. So in this case, let's go ahead and um, select the surface again. You can see the offset that it's creating for the thicken. We're actually going to reverse that. So it's below it, 
and then we're gonna we're gonna make it 0 0.06. I think that's pretty good. So 60 thousands hit apply. And there it is. And you can see here we need to smooth it out, so we could go ahead and select that, put a fillet on it, and select that, and put a fillet. Maybe increase it until it looks until it actually disappears, meaning that it's uh, not going to work. And there we go. It looks a little bit awkward. I'm not sure why it did that. I think we're having some problems with the surface there, but for the most part, it's we'll just leave it for right now. Okay, now what we need to do is put on the back side. Now the way we're going to do that is just like we made the boat in the last class, we're going to go ahead and select the top plane and offset it. And offset it by 0.5. I think that should do it. But you know what? We probably want to bring up one of the images. So let's bring up the front. So we'll right click on it and hit show. And just make sure. Oh, I need to extend a little bit more. So we'll double click on this plane. And we'll set it to maybe. Actually, we could dynamically move it. And maybe 0.55. I think that might do it. Okay, maybe actually 0.56. There we go. All right, now we start a sketch on that plane, and right at the origin, put a point. Right at the red origin. Okay, now we could exit the sketch and turn off our image and what we're gonna do here is actually um, we're gonna go ahead I should have actually uh, used the surface but let's go ahead and try this okay we'll go ahead and select the surface the select this edge here we'll go to surface loft the lofted surface select this edge and then select the point and now we can see a little preview there. Now it's a little sharp, but watch this. There are options under Start and End Constraints. We could add weight to it. Here we'll go ahead and select this um, curvature or tangency to face. Either G1 or G2 will work. I'm going to go with tangency. And then over here, and we might actually want to bring up the picture. Okay. And then now, I'll end the end constraint, let's see if we go normal to profile. And there it is. So tangency to face for the start constraint, normal to profile for the end constraint, and hit the apply button. And now we can hide our picture again. Now we just have to thicken that. And actually, let's hide the plane. We just select it, and we go back to insert, Law space, thicken, 60 thousandths, select the face again just to make sure, hit apply. Well, in this case, we're getting a rebuild error. Oh, I didn't see this. Actually, we're getting an anomaly that occurred. Uh, let's. It's the first time I've experienced that actually in this lesson. Let's try modifying this surface. Okay, instead of normal to profile, let's turn it to none temporarily. We could always put a fillet on that. I have a feeling it's because it was bunching up at the bottom. So let's try this one more time. Insert, lost space, thicken. There we go. That looks like it's going to work. Uh, it's still a rebuild there. Anyway, normally I don't experience that with this particular model. We're going to go ahead and leave that alone, but um, you could try it on your own and fiddle with those different settings if you like. I'm going to go ahead and put a fillet around this of 0.05, or uh, not, not 0.05, actually uh, 0.01, just to break the edges on the top and the bottom. So 10 thousandths. And my computer's slowing down considerably here. 
and hit apply. Okay, in class I'll try and figure out a way that we could uh, fix that, maybe make another video. But for some reason it's not working. We could just offset a surface and try and uh, thicken it from the bottom up. It's hard to say. I'm not sure why it's uh, giving us an error there. Anyhow, um, and that, oh, actually, we will try something else here. That pretty much finishes this lesson, but if you want to watch, I'll actually try and repair this in just a, a, another minute. Okay, what I ended up doing to get this to work properly, or to at least partially, is I ended up leaving it the way it was with the surface. And just like we learned in the earlier one where we actually trimmed off the top, I basically used the same method. I just drew a little line across and went to surface trim using the line to trim off the top. Remember to rebuild before you do that, after you draw the sketch, in order to get the surface trim to work. So you trim off the top, and then I went to thicken, and I thickened it. Now, when I tried to thicken it, for some reason, it didn't like to merge the two bodies. Um, so what I ended up doing is just leaving it as this. Um, there's an option to turn off tr uh, merge bodies. So just to show you that, if I go to Edit Feature, you can see here, here's Merge Results. That's what fails. If you turn it off, you could actually create a separate solid body, which will still be all right for manufacturing purposes in most cases. Uh, my suggestion, though, would uh, possibly be to delete the actual thickens altogether, merge the two surfaces with the tool that's right over here, which is Knit Surface, and then thicken it. And I'll try that. Okay, it, it appears that I was able to get it to work the way I thought I could. I went back and I removed the actual thickened surfaces. Then I recreated the surface loft at the very tip, and then I used the knit surface to put them together. So I selected both faces after creating that, and I went to this little icon here, knit surface, knitted them together. The next thing I did, I went to insert, boss space, thicken, and then I selected, try not to select it from here, you wanna select it from the feature tree. So I had the little plus symbol up here at the top and selected the surfaces that I wanted to knit together. In this case, I can't do it because I already selected them. But, um, oh, not thicken. Oh, that's right. And so we selected the knit surface. And I had it actually go up instead of down for the thickness. And set it to 60 thousandths and applied it. And I got it to work without having to cut off the little end there. Otherwise, if you trim the other end, I bet you it would work in reverse. And that finishes exercise 21.